right y'all so in one of my last videos that ccna starter pack video if you missed that video make sure that you are subscribed because i'm dropping this kind of content on you weekly but in that last video i spoke about putting together a little training schedule for anybody that may be interested for a study plan for studying for the ccna or basically just it certifications in general got some feedback from a lot of y'all saying that that would be a good idea to put something together so that's what i'm going to try to do with this video plus i myself have been slacking on my studying if you've been following me i've been trying to study for the security plus since february on average it only takes people like two months but i got a lot of stuff going on so i just really been slacking so i just want to take this as an opportunity for me to create a little mini project and put together a little training schedule that'll help me be accountable and and really help me with setting that goal of passing the security plus as well as just moving forward with any kind of it certifications my goal is by the end of this video you should have some kind of solid resource that you can use as you're studying for the CCNA or really any kind of IT certification to level set or bring some kind of balance. If you feel like you missed too many days or something, you can just go ahead and hop on this video and then try to make sure that you're just sticking to the study plan that you created and that you don't forget it. And it's just a resource that I could share with y'all. And then again, y'all can share it to anybody that might need it if it helps y'all. So that's my goal and hopefully it will help out so if that's something that you're interested in then definitely tap in with me hang out for a little bit i'll be sharing everything as far as the research how i developed this study plan the little bit of research that i did as well as what i'm currently using the 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 study plan how i'm currently using it and how i plan to use it moving forward if you're not subscribed like i mentioned make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss any of this weekly content that i'm dropping on you that's related to this it related kind of industry this kind of content if you're interested in that especially if you're a beginner with all of that out of the way let's go ahead and get started with the video okay so i'm going to start off by talking about the research i did it was just really some basic research so just like anything if I want to search on something you, you want to research something I'm gonna hit Google up and all I did was basically just go in there and just look at how long it takes the average person to study for the CCNA and if you've been around IT long enough then you know about CBT nuggets if you don't know about them they're just the online training course pretty popular for all different level IT certifications from beginner to expert they have uh, training videos great trainers and everything like that but uh, they also have a blog and I came across a blog that where they did a study on different certifications and how long it took the different certified pros how long it took them to go ahead and get that certification so I use that for my research because it's pretty solid I'm pretty sure I'll leave the link in the description so that of course you could do your own research and look into all the details of the study but uh, let's go ahead and pop over to that web page real quick so we're right here at the article or the blog or whatever hopefully y'all can see all of that hopefully it's blown up but how long should you study before exam day this was updated September 1st 2023 so almost a year old but pretty recent with the study and basically all it's saying here is the different exams right and how long it took people to study and as you can see right off rip we got ccna it takes the average person three to five months to study so and on average it's 33 percent of all of the people that they surveyed right and then you know the percentages of the different lengths of time that it took everybody else so this was a good article definitely check out the link in the description if you want to read more about it on yourself but this is how i came about it really to see okay so the average person is going to take a roughly about three to six months they say five months but i'm gonna just call it six months just for make it easier six months we really think like in the terms people don't really say five months all right so now that i knew it took the average person about six months i started looking up stuff like different kind of training schedules like what professionals use you know but if you know anything about me my favorite player uh is kobe but you know r.i.p but his training schedule was uh it, it, it was pretty shocking it was called a 666 workout if you don't know about it so in the off season uh it would be six months of training right and then he would do do that for six days a week 
and he would do it six hours a day. Now, of course, um, if you're thing like me and you gotta work a job, you got family and everything and all of this other kind of stuff, you're not gonna be able to get those six hours in a day. But for six months, and if you do it for six days a week, just put in that kind of perspective or that kind of mindset around developing your training schedule is what you're going to have to do and what we're going to talk about next when we move on to how we're going to build out this whole game plan all right so now that i know that it takes the average person at least six months the way my mindset kind of is if somebody takes like if it takes the average person six months to do something then I try to look at ways where I can just, if, if doing it in six months, let me see if I can do it in five months or in three months. So then I just look into more of what were they doing to be able to achieve that goal. And if you read into the article, they said it was about an hour a day that they were studying uh, and pretty much every day, four to six months. And the way that breaks down to me is they're pretty much doing seven hours a week. So you pretty much got to find at least a good seven to 10 hours a week to set aside for studying. How that's going to break down, whether you do two hours a day for five days a week, however you want to do that is really going to be on you. But again, my mindset is if they're doing an hour a day, if I just do two hours a day, then I'm going to be that much quicker than the average person. And it's just like, again, my, if I see that, you know, the weightlifter or whatever is doing is squatting like 600 pounds if i'm able to squat like 300 pounds which is a crazy number but if i'm able to squat at least half of what the strongest man in the world is squatting then i'm good and that was probably a bad analogy because i'm nowhere close to squatting like 300 pounds but you get what i'm saying if i'm just in the vicinity of greatness i'm gonna be great myself and that's that's what you should be aiming for as you're putting together your study plan you want to be better than the average person or not necessarily better than just putting in a different kind of work ethic work style so where you can get results different than what the average person is getting because if you put in the same effort same work ethic and everything you're gonna get what that average person is gonna get you got to do something different if you want different results okay moving on to our first thing that we're gonna talk about right now as far as how we're gonna put together the game plan so we got our research done we know that it takes six months and on average the person is studying at least one hour per day or seven hours per week on average that's what they're doing so what you want to do with any goal or what i do with any goal is part of what you have to do when you get a goal you just got to break it down i'm sure you've heard this before breaking it down into manageable chunks so if we want to apply that kind of concept or that way of thinking to the CCNA, then we look at the CCNA exam topics. If you're not familiar, just Google CCNA exam topics and it's just a blueprint of general guideline of what you should follow, what you may or may not be tested on. Generally, what the exam topics are there, you're going to be tested on that. So you have six exam topics and what I went for the encore when I passed the encore is just take it section by section, right? So break it down into manageable chunks. So if we got six sections and we got six months to go through it, you already know what time it is. You got one month each section. So however you got to break that down, there's different topics and subtopics in each of the exam topics, but roughly you got four weeks to get through each topic and then don't complete the topic until you move on to the next one. So that's how kind of how you have to structure it. And even more importantly, another perspective or another way that you can look at it at this is since we're breaking it down to do one month at a time, we're going to do each of those exam sessions. It's still kind of a big way to deal with a goal because now we have this one month goal of we're going to get through this section in one month. So we made the six month goal easier by breaking it down in one month. Now to make the one month goal easier, you guessed it, you're going to have to break it down into weeks. And then the weeks you're going to have to break down the days, days and hours. And this is building out your training schedule. This is how you're going to build out the training schedule. This is how you not going to be uh, forgetting what you're training about or not knowing what, what to need to train. You're going to have all of this already built out. And again, uh, this is just another perspective of breaking down something in manageable chunks. This is called time management. This is another way to define time management. I never had a definition for time management, but this is a very easy definition for you if you don't know. Basically, time management is you're, you're going to plan out your whole year. And once you plan out that whole year, you plan out the months. Then down to the 
weeks, down to the days, down to the hours. You can do it down to the minutes if you want to be that aware of what you're doing and what you're trying to accomplish. But again, that's on the extreme side. But again, all you're trying to do is break something down into manageable chunks. And then just by doing that, you're naturally going to be using a little bit of time management. And when you break down everything in manageable chunks, that's just one of the principles also, if you didn't know, that's gonna be one of the principles to defeat um, procrastination. How you define procrastination, right, is just you not taking action, right? But if you break something down into manageable chunks, yeah, we can't do something in six months, we can't do something in one month, but we can, for this hour, sit down and record some content like I'm doing, or we could sit down for an hour and focus ourselves to learn about STP or whatever we're trying to learn about. We could focus for an hour. And if we can't focus for an hour, at least we can get 30 minutes. If we can't get 30 minutes, 15 minutes, five minutes, to whatever you can get into where you can build up and then start adding to that and developing that skill of both time management and breaking stuff down in manageable chunks. And then we're gonna be able to overcome stuff like procrastination, which keeps us ultimately from reaching our goals. All right, up next, so now, again, so just to recap, we already went over, okay, we need six months to do this thing. We went over breaking it down piece by piece. Now we're at a level two, how are we gonna do our training? Should we do hands-on training? Should we do practices and should we do a lecture? There's many different resources that we can use for training. So for training, what I usually do is I wanna do two hours a day and for the first hour of the day, and this is gonna be in the morning, and this is just how I'm built. Um, people are not morning people or night people, whatever the case may be, but whenever you're most alert or you can do something cognitively challenging, I try to do that in the morning time, that's when I have the most energy. You gotta be aware when you have the most energy. You don't wanna be trying to study or do something important after you just had a long day at work and you had to take care of the kids and you had to blase squat, whatever you had to do, right? You don't wanna do something then that's super important. So at the beginning, when I have a lot of energy, I'm gonna do something super important. Like maybe I'll listen to a lecture and, and really be locked in and take notes. Or I'm gonna be reviewing my notes, going over all of my notes, or I'm gonna be doing practice exams. These are things that are all cognitively challenging to me that are really stimulate my brain and really get me energized and really lock in that information. You're going to do that for one hour out of the day. And then for your second hour out of the day, then you can do the hands-on training like the lab and this stuff. Because with labs, you're going to have to be doing a lot of configuring the IP addresses and configure a routing protocol, a lot of copy and pasting and stuff before you're actually troubleshooting the lab you're really building out the lab more than you are troubleshooting in my experience a lot of time is spent building out these labs that aren't already built out that's where a lot of your time is spent so on that second hour go ahead and just do some admin stuff configure the ip address get your config all together uh, uh, config, uh build it script it out you're gonna have to do this again in the real world i've mentioned this before but just get used to configuring equipment and everything i know you're not gonna want to do it but just do it anyways because you're gonna have to. This is what you signed up for, so you should just get that out of your head that you don't wanna do it. But the main point is do the, do the lazy stuff at the end of the day where you don't need that much brain power that doesn't require that much brain power. And again, and I just wanna mention, this is just about training, specifically training. And again, we wanna do two hours a day. If the average person is doing one hour a day and we're doing two hours a day, guess what? We are gonna cut the time in half that it takes us to get to our goal. Maybe it may take us three months or maybe it may take us four months because we're putting in that extra work and we're really getting the most value out of it by following these kind of guidelines and our study plan. Finally, and this probably should have been the first thing that I mentioned because I can't stress this enough. This is where I've seen the most gains, the most important thing. And if you stuck around till now in this video, congratulate yourself because this is going to be a major key into passing your certifications and this is all tracking your progress you need to be responsible hold yourself accountable track your progress you could do this by joining online communities and, and get to study groups um, maybe locally you know do meetups locally with local study groups this really uh, expands your mind you get different perspectives of what people have been studying and you guys are working together now it's a mastermind right and if you don't know what a mastermind is is basically 
uh, uh, minds working together toward the same goal. And if you got that much brain power going to the same goal, that goal is going to be murder. You just uh, you murk it, and then just having that person to call on when you know when they, you slacking or when when and if they slacking, you can tell them to tighten up. But you need to also. That's good to have all those people around you, the mastermind and all that, but hold yourself accountable. Get a journal. It might sound corny to, you know, dear diary today, I, but bump that. Get a journal, get in there and track your progress. Here's a journal prompt that you can use to track your progress. Three things that I learned today. So that's just gonna hold you accountable. And again, this journaling, I'm gonna do this at nighttime. It's not gonna be something that I have a lot of brain power for it. And you're just gonna write three wins that you had, three things that I learned today. Just like if you got kids like me, you ask the kids what you learned from school, you hold yourself accountable. What'd you learn about STP? Give yourself three facts. Develop your own journal prompts that will hold you accountable to track your progress. That way, after each month, you could be like, okay, this is everything that I've learned. Let me go over this. Let me go over the notes that I talked about STP. Let me make sure I'm solid on that. Let me brush up on this before the month is over. That way you're tracking your progress and it's really gonna hold you accountable and should really boost you right toward that goal of getting that CCNA or whatever kind of IT certification you're going after. All right, folks, I really hope y'all enjoyed the video. I enjoy creating the content, researching it. Again, hopefully this is gonna be a valuable resource for us in the future if we need to level set and say, hey, what's our game plan and everything. Remember what you wanna do, just to recap it, right? You wanna break down any kind of goal into manageable chunks, right? And then really use that time management once we break it down into manageable chunks like those six months okay what we can do for month one and then what we're going to do for the week the day and then the second thing you want to do is split up your training hours do cognitively challenging things or another way of saying stuff that requires a lot of brain power do all of that stuff when you're most alert if, whether it's at nighttime or in the morning you know who you are so do it at those times train your hardest at those times that's where you're going to get you know the mains the most return most bang for your buck um, so to speak and then finally make sure to track your progress hold yourself accountable make sure you're tracking the progress so that you don't lose sight so make sure that you're keeping up with yourself and all of that if nothing else do yourself a favor if you did nothing but watch this video at least take one step whether it's just getting a journal and just journaling whatever just take one step toward the goal and that's going to give you the energy to take the next step and then to take the next step. You just got to take one of the steps. If you don't want to knock out all the three of these things and implement them right away, cool, don't do that. But at least if you set the goal to pass this certification, at least take one step toward it. That way you will get the energy, as they say, to do the thing if you do the thing. That's how you get the energy to do the thing if you do the thing. Hopefully all of that made sense. Again, appreciate each and every one of y'all for tapping in. Make sure to subscribe so you don't miss next week's video. Um, and it's gonna be content just like this. And if this is stuff is interesting to you, I love sharing it. And hopefully I'll see y'all on that next video. Y'all already know, holla at me, peace.